and dispersed peacefully without anybody mm. injured or killed. Mm. That is not a lethal weapon for you. It is pertinent at this juncture mm. and incumbent upon me to note that we did invite uh, the representatives of the Nigerian army uh, to give an account of what has uh, occurred within these clashes in Abuja. Uh, we are still hoping that eventually they will respond to that invitation. But uh, again, at this juncture, we're going to throw it over to uh, Lagos, where my colleague Neota is standing by with another guest. Neota. Thank you, Ajiri. Uh, let me quickly mention here also that besides the invitation to the representatives of the army, we also sent out an invitation to the representatives of the Shiites to also come in and shed light on this entire situation. We're hoping uh, that both teams' uh, representatives will be here before the show winds down. But here in Lagos, we have with us a legal practitioner, Mr. G.T. Ogunye. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure for inviting me. Thanks for inviting um, me. You've heard the submission of the retired um, captain, group captain from our Abuja studio, and you've basically seen or heard the situation in Abuja. What's your take on this? Well, um, first, um, let me just say that it's another sad day for Nigeria when we have to discuss the needless casualties that have been recorded in our country as a result of uh, clashes between the military or law enforcement agencies and the ordinary citizens. Uh, since 2009, Nigeria has been fighting a war in the northeast of the country. Uh, the anti-Boko Haram war. And that war uh, has had its undulation in terms of its uh, low ebb and very high uh, uh, situation. And we are told that the war was being won down. But in recent times, there have been so much terrifying occurrences in the Northeast that suggest that we're dealing with a very ruthless and determined enemy in uh, Boko Haram, who are still clashing with the military, killing soldiers, uh, invading uh, military stations uh, and camps, and, and, and inflicting very terrible uh, losses on, on our military. Uh, we salute the courage of the military. Uh, we support them. The Nigerian people should do so. Uh, because one of the noblest uh, things you can do as a person is to stake your life. That's the only thing you've got entirely uh, to defend uh, your country and its people. Um, however, uh, I think what is going on in Abuja, or what happened yesterday, uh, was something that shouldn't have been allowed to happen. I listened to your guests in Abuja, uh, and uh, 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 my understanding is that he's discussing those critical factors that could lead to violence, how you manage protest, how the military is not well suited uh, for internal security operation or law enforcement uh, operations, etc., etc. All those things are, are, are good. But what are the larger pictures here? What is the larger issue that is driving these clashes? And which may uh, continue to uh, ensure for a very long time that these clashes continue. Because you are not going to eliminate or exterminate the Shiite movement in Nigeria. They are a religious minority in the northern part of the country. They are a religious minority, so you're not going to kill all of them. And so the prospect is that these clashes will survive the Buhari administration and another person will become the president of the country and then will then have to deal with all the situations. So I start by saying that in December 2015, something terrible happened in Abuja. There was a clash between the military and the Shiite movement. Kaduna. In Kaduna. In Kaduna. Uh, thanks. Uh, and in that incident, 347 Nigerians were slaughtered. Three, four, seven. I'm not saying three or four or seven or 30 or 40 or 70. 347. These are not my figures. These are the figures established by the Judicial Commission of Inquiry that uh, was put in place 
in the aftermath of that bloodletting. And what happened? The thing started from insisting on the right of way by the military high command. We then led to clashes. Uh, the video footages were shown. Uh, the defiant uh, posturing of uh, the Shiite members who were there in the military. And uh, thereafter, there was mayhem. But significantly in that incident, for those who are insisting that that matter was limited to the right of way of the military high command. After they won, the military moved into the dwellings of the members of this movement, demolished them. So what did those dwellings do? How did they obstruct the right of way of the military high command? They demolished all those dwellings. And in the whole process, in the orgy of violence that followed, 347 were killed. Thereafter, the Shia leader, Sheikh El Sakizaki, who was injured and who recurrently had been losing his children to these clashes, was arrested with a wife in that state of injury and was detained. And so the protest started, first in Kaduna State and later in Abuja. Before this last incident, the member of the Shia movement had been protesting in Abuja, taking on the police, paralyzing activities. And 